regular. That's an easy way to go. So we're going to convert this to rectangular. This form right here, Euler's form, is not good for converting. The standard form is good for converting. So we're going to go to standard form first. So write this in standard form, R is 6. Theta is 5 pi over 4. So we just rewrite it like that. And now, all you have to do is evaluate the cosine and sine and distribute. So evaluate cosine and sine and then distribute your 6 across. That's all you have to do. So standard polar form is pretty much as close as you can get to rectangular form. We just evaluate cosine and sine, distribute your radius across, and that's all you need to do. And I just rationalize denominators, which you don't need to do if you don't want to. So now we're going to do complex products in polar form. We'll do standard form first. So we're gonna have two numbers, Z1, which will have R1 and theta1, and then our second number, Z2 will be R2, theta2, so I'm going to find Z1 times Z2. So I'm just going to rewrite Z1 and Z2. There are polar forms. And we're going to rearrange this. <clears throat> so let's move our radius, radii out front. So this is commutative property of multiplication. We can write this as R1 times R2. So just move the radius over. This happened a little bit before, right? All right, well, you can still read it. All right, 
codes theta one plus i sine theta one. Cos theta two plus i sine theta two. So this is good practice for foiling or flowing. So I want you to flow this out right now. So you're gonna get four pieces when you do. R1 and R2 stay where they are. So I split it into real part and imaginary part. So what I underline, cos theta one, cos theta two, minus sine theta one, sine theta two. That is on your cheat sheet. What is that, what's another way to write that? It's written with A's and B's on your cheat sheet. So it's a sum or difference formula. Yep. So co, so in this case, A and B are theta one, theta two. So the one with the minus turns into a plus. So there's the first underlined part right there. So add up those two. Now second part, What is that second part I underlined? Sine, cos, cosine. That's sine of the two angles added together. So sine has them mixed together, so this is sine of, in this case, theta one plus theta two. Like that? You can if you want to. It's up to you. I had to keep these two in parentheses, so I know I add the angles before I take the sign of them. 
but uh, I know I multiply the i times sine after I'm done adding, taking sine of the sum of the angles, just because it's outside the function. So this is z1, z2, according to our flowing and our trig uh, identities that we used. So if you look, when you multiply two complex numbers, you multiply their radii and add their angles. So this is the geometric information we get out of here. So you're going to multiply angle uh, radii. And then over here, both places, you're going to add the angles. So we did all this in standard polar form. Let's go in uh, Euler form and see what we get. It'll be a lot faster. And we better get the same thing, or else two forms are not the same. So if we don't get the same result, the two forms are not going to be the same. So Euler form, we have the same numbers, except we write them in our e to the i theta notation. And now we're going to multiply them out. You have all the properties that you're used to in algebra. You can rearrange the terms, reorder things, and you have all the exponential rules that you had before. So can you use your algebra skills and rearrange this so the radii are multiplied and the angles are added? So take 30 seconds, use your algebra skills, and rearrange this. So what's the very last step? After you should have gotten to here, you just add your, your exponents when the bases are the same. And we can rearrange, move all the r's out front. So we're sort of adding, we're adding our exponents, but how do I write this with just theta 1 plus theta 2? What do I do with the i? Factor it. factor it. So we're going to factor our i out, and then we got theta 1 plus theta 2 left over. So we did our exponential rules right here. Now this is just standard factoring. This is e. The i is factored out. And we have theta 1 plus theta 2. So that's just regular factoring on that step. So in Euler form, multiply radii, add the angles. Same exact thing that we got. Which one was more fun? Euler form? Yeah, we didn't have to go and look anything up. We just had to remember algebra. So we're going to do division, and let's get lazy and just do it in Euler form. So we'll do division in Euler form and see what we get. So we're using the same z1 and z2, 
just going to write it out in division. So I want to know what is z1 divided by z2. And I want you to rearrange this. And it won't be multiplying the radii and adding the angles. That's multiplication. So it won't be exactly like that. But it's going to be similar. So I want you to combine the radii as best you can. Basically move them out front and then see what you can do to those two angles. So these are rules of exponents. I'll do the radii part first. You're splitting into two fractions. So can you combine those angles together in some way? Hopefully you got that. Dividing is subtracting. Dividing bases, uh, similar bases with exponents is subtracting their exponents. Or the, another way to think about it, the i theta 2 is negative because it's on the bottom. So you can add them, but you're adding that reciprocal of that one. And of course, we do the same exact last move, factoring. Now when you divide, obviously it matters which one you divide into the other one. So you can't change the order and expect the same result. So you can see here, if R1 and R2 change places, you get the reciprocal of the radius and you'll get the, ne the negative of the angle. So if you change the order you divide in, things change. So that is Z1 over Z2. And we'll summarize. You're going to divide, oops, divide radii. and you subtract angles. And here the order is important. Division is not commutative. So really it makes a difference which one is first and second. And if we went in standard coordinates, standard polar, form Now if you're wondering how in the world would we get to not have a denominator where to actually prove this we'd multiply by the conjugate of the denominator on top and bottom. So we take a few more steps, which we won't go through, but you get to, it's pretty easy to see R1 over R2 part, and then you would get cosine of theta one minus theta two plus I sine theta one minus theta two. That would be polar division right there. Let's do some problems with this. We'll do some multiplication first. So Z, we'll do three E to the I 20 degrees. <clears throat> and W will be six E to the I 100 degrees. So find Z times W. So I want you to figure out what is Z times W. You 
you actually don't even have to look up the rules. You can just do it by hand using your algebra rules. Nothing up in those in that work did we use anything that was beyond algebra, probably algebra two right there. There's just exponential rules and rearranging multiplication. It's a good time to check and make sure your i doesn't look like your, your other numbers. Make sure it doesn't look like your 1 or maybe your 2. You can fix that by putting a good dot on top of it. No number has a dot on top, so that'll fix it right there. Although that degree symbol sure looks like a dotted i somewhere. So here is the polar form of the product. Any questions on that? Just added angles, multiply radii, that's it. Let's turn this into Cartesian or rectangular form. So we have basically re to the i theta, and what I really want is a plus bi. So I want the x and the y component. What do we have to do before we can really turn it into Cartesian or rectangular form? How did we do it last time? A whole 15 minutes ago. So we first wrote it in standard form, which seems a little bit annoying, but if you write in standard form, you can turn it into rectangular form very easily. So we're going to write in standard form first, standard polar form. 18, our angle is 120 degrees. And now all you need to know is cosine 120 and sine 120. So figure out what those two numbers are, write them down, and you're basically there. They won't both be positive. You're not in quadrant one. Any questions on that? I redrew the unit circle there, so I can see 120 degrees pretty easily. It's 30 past 90. That's how I thought of it, or the next stop after 90 degrees, or pi over 2. And just substitute those values in. Make sure you keep your eye there. If you don't have your eye, you're just going to be adding together two numbers. That's not the right thing to do. So same Z and W. And I want to do find z over w squared. 
No, I want. I do want a square one. Let's square. Let's do z squared over w. So when you so we're gonna plug in the values here. So we have three e to the i twenty degrees squared over six e to the i one hundred degrees. So let's look at this squared right here. What we really have is a product three times e to that stuff. That's a product squared. So this is ABAB, which is a squared b squared. So when we square this, 3e to the i, we're going to square that. So each of those gets squared. Or you could write it out as 3e to the i 20 degrees times 3e to the i 20 degrees. So we all know squared multiplied by itself. So let's do that product in the numerator first, and then we'll worry about the division. So we'll just do the numerator first, and then division second. So multiplication is easy if you know what you're doing. Multiply radii, add the angles. If you don't know what you're doing, as long as you know algebra, you can do it in about 20 or 30 seconds. If you know what you're doing, you can do it in like four seconds. So how do we divide? Do radii separately, nine over six. And what do I do with the angles? Subtract them. So we're bringing the bottom one to the top, so we're subtracting those powers. So we get 40 minus 100, which is negative 60. And 9, 6 reduces to 3 halves. E to the i, negative 60 degrees. And let's write in rectangular form. So it goes cos negative 60 plus i sine negative 60. And last step, we're distributing 3 fourths minus 3 square root 3 over 4 i. I like to redraw the unit circle lots of times whenever I need a value out of it. Because I think in a way more geometrical sense. So I just think, all right, where's negative 60? It's right there. I make it as accurate as I can, and then what are the two values right there? There aren't that many values if you've done enough unit circle work. There's basically five pairs, but there's really only three pairs, and they just change their order and their signs. So that is multiplication division. We also just squared. So we're going to look a little bit more closely at powers now. So we did just a square right here. We did it by multiplication. So let's look a little more carefully at powers of complex numbers. So 
So we're only going to do powers of one base. So my base is going to be r e to the i theta. I don't need r1 theta1. I'm not going to have a second number hanging around. So we're just going to look at one number. And we'll go z squared first. So of course, that is z, z. So take 10 seconds and simplify this down. So you get i times theta 1 plus theta 2, or well, theta plus other theta. So theta plus theta is 2 theta. So I'm going to just write i 2 theta. That's because we get theta plus theta is just two of them. That's z squared z cubed, which you can write as z squared times z. We said z squared already is r squared e to the i to theta. So I'm just shortcutting r z squared times z. So take 20 seconds and simplify this down as much as you can. get r times r times r, r cubed, and all three thetas are added together. So you get theta plus theta plus theta, or three theta. So we're going to do mathematical adduction, and we're assuming z to the n is r to the n e i and theta. We're going to find z to the n plus 1 power. So we're assuming this works out for a number n. And we're going to show that if we know it works for n, it also works for n plus 1. So the power rule, this is z to the n times z. And we're assuming z to the n is r to the n e i n theta times regular z r e i theta. So r times r to the n, that's r to the n plus 1. And we look at the angles, we have n theta plus theta. which is e to the i. Now, just looking at this, I can factor out a theta. And when I do so, I'm left with n plus 1 times theta. It's a little bit weird. The 1's invisible. I could just write a 1 right next to theta. And then you say, oh, we're just factoring out the theta. So we get n plus 1. So that is mathematical induction. We showed it for 2 and 3. So using this, we know it works for 3. So this induction step says if we know it works for 3, when n is 3, it'll work for the next higher number, which is 4. And we know it works for 4, so we can show it works for 5 with this induction step right here. And you just keep going. It works for every positive number past 5 as well. So we'll write our final, well, we can really just circle it, but I'll rewrite it a little bit bigger. z to the n equals r to the n e to the i n theta. So that is powers. I'm going to go back and put a box around the important 
formulas we had above. So that was our division right there in Euler form. And multiplication I see right here. So there's our division, our multiplication. I'll rewrite the left side. That was multiplication right there. So our first example, write 1 plus i to the fifth power in rectangular form. The fast and more fun way to do this is turn it to polar form, use our power rule, figure out what, the, what it is, and then turn it back into rectangular form. So what I want you to do is turn into polar form. And I'll start you out with a graph. There's a graph of your number right there. Go over one, go up one. The angle should be pretty obvious, what you're using right here. Radius is not one, but it's not hard to find. Turn to polar form. Use z to the n above, right there. And then turn back into rectangular form. So do that right now. It's good practice conversion, converting and taking powers and then converting back. Actually, let's go to the sixth power. It'll be a little nicer. While you're doing this, I'm going to do this the worst way possible, which is not turning into polars. You don't have to write down what I write, no. You just should get the same, find the same answer I got. Yeah, so this is not the way I want you to go.
So hopefully you want the polar out. So you could go the tough way and keep it rectangular the entire way and sort of foil out a whole bunch of times. I did it very carefully so I wouldn't have to actually foil it out six times across itself. I did some, I did the square first and then I did the fourth power next and then I just said the sixth power is the fourth power times the second power. So you can break them down to smaller powers like that carefully. All right, so that is the sixth power. What happens if I ask you to the 66th power? The higher the power is, the worse the tough way gets. So if I raise to a really high power, you're going to spend a long time trying to figure out how to break it down and multiplying a lot of complex numbers. But if I ask you the easier way, the polar way, all you have to do is put that big number right here, distribute it out, and then figure out, you, you, may have, you will have a large angle, but you just take away a bunch of two pies, figure out where your angle is. And then whatever your radius is, if it's square root 2 to the 97th power, just leave it like that. You don't need to multiply that by itself 97 times. So the higher the power is, the faster it is to go polar form. If it's a smaller number like 6, you could probably go either way. But if it's a bigger number, you want to go polar form. Let's do one more example. Why is this number complex has no i's in it? So you got square root of a negative number. So it's complex right there. So let's rewrite it with i's. So square root negative 3, we're going to rewrite this. This is negative 1 times regular 3 square rooted. And that's square root 3 times square root negative 1, which is square root 3i. So we can get the square root out of the negative, or get the negative out of the square root very carefully. Uh, it's a complex number, but I want to write it with i's in it so we can, so it looks just like the forms that we were using before. All right, so you can get this in any way. You could multiply it out across itself three times, or you could go to polars, cube it, and you can leave it in either form. I'll give you a one minute head start and see if you can get to the right answer first.
So you should have gotten negative 8 out of this, or 8 times e to the i negative 5. So I, I wrote some easy polar numbers right down here. Oops. 1 is e to the i with 0 rotation. i is e to the i pi over 2, half rotation. You can also write this as e to the i negative 3 pi over 2. So go the wrong way, but go 3 pi over 2. Negative 1 is e to the i pi, which you could also write as e to the i negative pi. Let's rotate halfway. So you're going the wrong way down the x-axis, or the real axis. And last one, you can rewrite negative i. That is e to the i negative pi over 2. And whatever of these points we're using is one of these four numbers right here. So we got 1 i, negative 1, negative i, like that. So these are just the four directions that could get you 1, negative 1, i, or negative i. So it's easy to write out the regular numbers in Euler notation. You're just picking out the four. And of course, you can add as many. You can go e to the i, 2 pi if you want to, will be positive 1 and et cetera, et cetera. You can add as many rotations as you want in there. So the last thing we're going to do is complex roots. And then we'll be out of complex numbers and into vectors. So I have one more, about a half, cl half class worth of complex numbers, and then we'll be into vectors.